Everyone knows that a mouse and keyboard is superior to a console controller. Sorry guys, that's not up for debate. You just can't match the speed and accuracy of a mouse with a little joystick. However, the keyboard part of that equation is definitely suboptimal. The thing is you need to leave your fingers on the movement keys. So when you try to move them around to touch other keys, then you're taking your fingers off of the movement and that introduces an inherent delay. Now, thankfully there are some alternatives. Custom gaming controllers that we've looked at a few of before on this channel, such as the Razer Tartarus Pro, but they all follow a fairly similar pattern. The Azeron gaming keypad isn't a keypad at all. It's more like an extension of your fingers with buttons plastered all over it, but every button conveniently always at your fingertips. It's going to take you a while to get used to this, but when you do, I think you'll be impressed. It's unlike any other game controller I have ever seen before. So the Azeron is an entirely custom device, more on that later, but the small Latvian team that makes it can achieve such a high degree of customization by 3D printing most of the product. Now the end result doesn't have quite the same finish as you'd expect of an off-the-shelf product. You can see those telltale layer lines that you get on any 3D printed object. But as a trade-off, you get a whole lot more customization and frankly, the build quality is so good that I don't think it matters that it's been 3D printed. If that's something that's gonna put you off, I think you're really doing yourself a, a disservice there. Another benefit of it being entirely 3D printed is that it seems to be pretty easy to order replacement parts. Azeron sells some replacement switches, for instance, as well as an alternative palm rest and some different finger rails. If you do need to repair it at a later date, I don't think that should be a huge issue. Unlike, say, off-the-shelf products, which tend to be quite sealed and very difficult to repair. Now, normally I would expect a custom device like this to cost an arm and a leg, or at least a fingertip and a leg. However, at an entirely reasonable 150 euros, it's in line with some similar off-the-shelf devices, which are frankly inferior. So more about that customization aspect. Off the bat, you have a choice of either the classic or the compact model. We went with the classic, which has the most buttons, because you need all the buttons, obviously. You then have a choice of left or right-handed, uh, a flat or a curved palm rest. This is the curved palm rest, although the flat may be more appropriate for bigger hands. You have a wide range of colors to choose from, and this is awesome. On the side of the vise, it'll have Azeron written, but you can customize those letters, up to eight characters you can specify, which is great for streamers or just anyone who wants to show off a bit of bling on their gaming peripherals. So I opted for a shortened version of my gaming handle, Wolfie, uh, and it looks really cool. In addition, the device ships with a number of different rubber tips to put onto the joystick, but I just went with it out of the box, which I found to be the most comfortable. So your first step upon receiving the Azeron is to adjust the fit to suit your exact hand size. This is done using a series of hex screws and a hex tool is included. You can customize almost every part of the Azeron keypad from the angle of the fingers and the thumb to the distance from the palm rest ensuring you get a perfect personalized fit. So adjust each finger before locking it off and then moving on to the next. Repeat as necessary. It's a little fiddly, but easy enough to do and the tool is provided. You can always readjust later if needed. So let's get on to actually using the Azeron gaming keypad. On the thumb, you'll find an analog thumbstick, which also clicks. There's a four-way digital hat, which also clicks. And if that wasn't enough, there's an additional switch you can hit by pulling your thumb towards you. On each finger, there's at least four switches, one directly beneath, like a traditional keyboard, uh, another one you can pull your finger in to press, and another one you can push out to press. And then you have a row above that you can lift up and push. Now on your index and first finger, you also have a secondary row at the top, a sort of curled over. And that's uh, really just because the other fingers can't physically do the movement required to hit those. And as if all of that wasn't enough, your first finger also has one switch to the immediate right of it. So I'd forgive you for not keeping count, but that's a sum total of 19 buttons literally at your fingertips another one just next to your thumb, and of course the joystick and hat switch, which also have their own buttons. That's pretty much like half a full-sized keyboard along with a joystick, and all of those keys are 
perfectly placed to be seamlessly pressed without having to move your hand around. On the side, you'll also find a simple profile switch. Currently, you can have two profiles stored directly on the device. They're not emulated through any custom driver software. Instead, it's downloaded directly to the device, synced automatically, and that's stored in the device itself. So you can unplug it, take it anywhere else, and it'll act exactly as your profiles have been set up to do. It's just sending out standard supported joystick or keyboard keys so there's nothing weird about it. There's no custom drivers needed. You'll also find a very generous two meter long braided cable, which is more than enough for anyone. So the Azeron does of course need some custom software to set it up and to set up the keys and profiles. However, as I said, you don't need to keep any drivers installed. It's just for the actual programming of those keys in the first place. You can also map the thumbstick to WASD movement if you need to. So not all games will support a kind of mixed mode joystick and keyboard approach. But the software is really impressive in the sense that it does one job and it does it really well. The interface might be simplistic, but that's by design. It's also incredibly seamless. On the main window, you get a preview of what all the buttons are currently assigned. You can choose the profiles from the left and to reassign your key, you just click on that button and then press the appropriate key. You don't need to save that profile. You don't need to upload it back to the device. It's all done asynchronously in the background. And now I find this fantastic for when I was in the middle of the game and I just wanted to quickly reassign the key because I'd forgotten one or wanted to try doing it a different way, I could just alt tab out, hit it, change the key, alt tab back again, and boom, it was working. It was just so simple, easy to use, easy to reprogram. And I think we've become so accustomed to bloated gaming peripheral software that seeing something like this was just a breath of fresh air. So what's it like in practice? I found it to be really comfortable, but I did find myself tweaking my profile and the fit, in fact, after a while. So when I first set it up, I thought that using the rows of keys as kind of different logical entities would be a good idea. Like all of the top row I would use for weapon switching, that sort of thing. After a while, I found that was a bit awkward and difficult to remember. So I ended up going by a more sort of finger-based approach. So I set my first finger up as movements where I could push forward to lie prone, pull back to crouch, press on it to jump, and then I put uh, grenades and other sort of secondary weaponry actions on my middle finger, as well as deployment of special weapons, that sort of thing. Uh, and then I put squad-based stuff, um, marking out targets, that sort of thing, on my third finger. And then I put less used things like opening the map on some of the more slightly awkward to touch ones that you have to actually lift your finger for. The button I found myself using most often was actually the the one attached to the thumbstick. So pulling my thumb up could be used for the use button. That I found to be really convenient, but you might find otherwise. And that's the beauty of the software. You can reassign the keys so easily, customize it exactly as you wish, and then do it all again because you found you didn't like that profile. But it doesn't matter, you can change it. The only awkward thing I found was that uh, in Warzone at least, you can't use a mixed keyboard, mouse, and controller method. So I can't assign the joystick as a native joystick controller. I had to change it to emulate WASD keys. Now what this means is that when you're driving, if you're trying to drive with just the thumbstick, then you can't go forwards and turn left at the same time. Obviously the the joystick only goes in one direction. Uh, so that made uh, driving and vehicle operation a bit awkward. Although I've only just started playing the game, so I expect I can reassign accelerate and brake uh, somewhere else, which would make that a lot easier. I just haven't tweaked that yet. But again, that's really what I love about this. It's just so easy to reassign the keys to something else. So I'm sure I'll figure that one out. So in terms of cheat detection software, uh, anti-cheat stuff, you should be absolutely fine with this. It's literally just like you took a keyboard and chopped it up. It's sending native keyboard commands. There's no string of keys. There's no macros that you can send, although you can do a keyboard shortcut like control tab or whatever. So you really shouldn't have any problem with anti-cheat software 
detecting that. However, it will give you a competitive advantage. I mean, the fact that you don't have to move your hands around in order to press somewhere else on the keyboard is definitely going to help you. That said, of course, there is a learning curve to using this. In the first week or two that you get it, you probably won't be as good as you used to be on a keyboard just because you have to relearn the muscle memory. Like me, if you've been using keyboards since you were five or whatever, you've probably become pretty accustomed to those and switching to this is a fairly big move. So maybe in that first week, you're not quite bringing your A game, but after you've got that muscle memory learnt, you're gonna be a lot better than you ever were with just a standard keyboard. So is it worth the money and should you buy one? Undoubtedly and absolutely. Whether it's for fast paced first person shooters, slower paced space combat sims maybe, or even more eclectic uses like sitting down for VR or perhaps video editing, I think you'll definitely get some benefit from this controller. In terms of long-term comfort, that's a bit too early to say. Personally, I haven't had any issues yet, no cramping or that sort of thing. But then I'm at the age where I don't have hours and hours to play games at any one time. My maximum session with this has been about an hour long and I've only had it for about two weeks. So again, I can't speak to the long-term impact of using that. For sure, the curved palm rest, which I had fitted to this one, does tend to lock your hand into quite a fixed claw-like position um, and if you think that might be a problem for you then I would suggest going with perhaps the flatter palm rest uh, which which has a little bit more flexibility for you there. If you know that you have problems with your hands cramping up uh, quite commonly then maybe this one isn't for you. Also probably worth bearing in mind that because it's custom made the production time for these might be a little bit longer than you'd expect for something off the shelf as well as the general sort of pandemic causing global shipping issues at the moment, there might be a little delay there. Anyway, go grab yours now from azeron.eu. I don't think you'll be disappointed. If this review has helped you to make your mind up about the Azeron Gaming Keypad, do hit the like button and consider subscribing. We would definitely appreciate that. We do a couple of giveaways every week, as well as technology tips and tutorials from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay safe. Oh, before I go, thanks to Azeron, we have another one of these fantastic gaming controllers to give away to one lucky viewer. Now we're gonna be giving you a 100% off coupon, of course, so you can head over onto the site and make your own message on the side, choose left and right, choose the right size, etc. To be in with a chance of winning that, just head over to the main makeuseof.com review article, which you'll find a link to in the description. At the bottom of that, you should find a competition widget. Just pop your details in there and you'll be in with a chance of winning. For some bonus entries, type in the code LEETGAMER. Good luck, entries close in about four weeks where we will contact the winner by email. So please add competitions at makeuseof.com to your address book to ensure it doesn't go into spam. Until next time.